I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be principles to get an X back. Well, I don't have any emails I'm going to go through with you today, but what I am going to go through is I'm going to talk about the most common principles about getting an X back. And I did a video several years ago, the best strategy to get an X back. And so these are bullet points that I've come up with that I'll go through and talk about how to address things like setting dates because these are like the most common things that I get questions about because I'd say probably 90% of the people that first come to me, they've come to me because a breakup happened or they're trying to get an ex back and then once we really get into it, they either need help with pickup skills, dating skills, relationship skills, quality of life issues, getting in shape, taking care of their body, figuring out their purpose. Really being successful with members of the opposite sex, whether you're a man or a woman, is about being great yourself, creating a great life and a great lifestyle that you're proud of, that you love and that you enjoy, even if you're you happen to be single. And if you're trying to reattract somebody, because a lot of the especially the men that I, I do phone sessions with, a big reason it is a lot of them don't have a great purpose or a mission in life, or they're just simply not happy. And by getting them focused on what they really need to be focused on as a man, having some ambition, some goals, some dreams, some things they're pursuing passionately, it helps balance out and smooth over the rough edges, so to speak. And it causes them to become more attractive, not only to the ex who they'd like to get back, but just women in general. So I got a quote that I wrote, and then I'm going to go through the quote, and then I'm just going to go bullet point by bullet point to, to cover these things. And the quote says, the strongest negotiating position in any personal or professional human interaction is being able to walk away and mean it. If you got dumped by a lover who you wanted to keep in your life, you must state what you want and then walk away and never look back. If they care or still have any romantic feelings for you, they will reach out in the future. If that happens, simply focus on creating a great date. Hang out, have fun, and hook up. Do not focus on a relationship commitment or dating labels. It must be their idea to become exclusive when you are the one who got dumped. If you dump them but now want them back, contact them, apologize for being an ass, and tell them you would like to see them. Make a date. If they won't make a date, tell them to call you if they change their mind and walk and never look back. You always must give an ex-lover the freedom, choice, space, and time to decide to see you romantically again. That is why continually contacting them to change their mind is the weak position and will never work. <clears throat> so let's go through the first bullet point here. And I'm just going to go through and read these because I've got the bullet points and then there's some text that I wrote. And so I want to make sure that I cover the things specifically that are the most important. There's basically 13 different bullet points that I've come up with here. I mean, we'd say it's lucky 13, of course. So the first one is, this is what you do if you're the one who got dumped, obviously not by your choice. You must communicate that you do not accept being friend-zoned or no longer being together, but instead want to continue seeing them. If they are unwilling to continue seeing you or give you another chance, you tell them to get in touch with you if they ever change their mind. You must let them go forever and never contact them again for any reason. You must never under any circumstances agree to being friends only. It's romance or you're simply not interested. Number two, walk and never look back. This is the strongest negotiating position in any professional or human interaction. Once you have stated what you want but they are unwilling to give it to you, just like if you're trying to negotiate a deal on a car and it's like, nah, I'm not going to do this. You've got to be willing to walk away. You tell them to contact you if they ever change their mind but you are not interested in anything platonic and to please not contact you unless they are interested in something romantic ever again. Walking and never looking – and that's what I call – that's speaking your purpose. That's what you want. You want to get back together. But it's like if you're only interested in something platonic because a lot of women are going to try to keep a guy stuck in friend zone, never fucking agree to that because you'll never get out of it if you do. Besides, it's not congruent with what you want anyways. You've got to be congruent with what you want, what's in your heart. Speak it. The other person's not willing to give you what 
you want, you walk and you never look back. Walking and never looking back means that you will never contact them again for any reason. I get lots of questions about this. No birthday messages, holiday messages, sorry about a death in your family members, etc. As far as you're concerned, you're never going to speak to them again. It's as if they've changed their number, they moved away. It's almost as if they're dead to you. That's the way you really got to look at it. Sorry to be so blunt, but that's the reality. Because you guys, well, the birthday's coming up. I get to, no, you want them, if they're the, especially if they're the ones that pushed you away, you want them to contact you over Thanksgiving or Christmas or Groundhog Day or President's Day or Columbus Day or whatever fucking happen, holiday happens to be. As far as you are concerned, you will never speak to them as long – again, as long as you live. If you have children with this person, make your arrangements ahead of time so there is absolutely no reason for them to contact you. There must be – and this is so important. There must be space, distance and time between you in order for an ex or someone you turned off to rethink and regret pushing you out of their life. It must be their idea to reach out to you first once they realize they are never going to hear from you again. The next bullet point, when they contact you – and this is an if. The only way they're going to contact you is if there's still some kind of interest. In other words, they realize – The radio silence that you're giving them means it's probably permanent and they're never going to hear from you again. And if they don't like the thought of that, if they can't fathom that thought, they're going to say, maybe I reacted harshly. Maybe I should give that person another chance. These other guys I've been going with, they're all turning out to be douchebags and we really did have a good time together. Well, maybe I should give him a call. If an ex or someone you were dating got turned off by your behavior – contacts you through text messages, email, Facebook messenger or phone calls and you must assume they want to see you and this should be your first response. And this is important. This is what the qualification here. Especially for guys that are needy, they're desperate, they're looking for any reason. Oh, she's liking my Facebook posts again. Does that mean I call her and ask her on a date? Fucking no way. So they're liking your Facebook posts or even commenting on social media posts does not count as them contacting you. Do not engage in any BS conversation or nonsensical chit chat when they contact you again. Be direct, be decisive and go for what you want by saying this. Hey, it's great to hear from you. I'd love to see you. When are you free to get together? I get a lot of guys that – I had a a guy that did an email coaching for the other day. Girl starts contacting him and he's like, hey, what are you doing? She's like, not much. What are you doing? He's like, oh, nothing really. I'm just watching some TV. What are you up to? And it's like went back and forth four or five times. And then he's like, she stopped responding. I was like, because you bored her to death. She reached out hoping that you were interested and still wanted to see her. And what do you do? You're going around in circles. Soon as she reaches out, hey, it's great to hear from you. I'd love to see you. When are you free to get together? Be direct, be decisive, get right to the point. Don't dither and dick around because if you dither and you dick around, she's just going to get bored and she's going to leave. Don't do that. It's crazy. It's a waste. The whole reason by doing no contact is for them to reach out. And some guys think, oh, but you know, I got to talk to her for a little while and warm her up. No, you don't. You've had no contact and now she's reaching out. The only reason she's reaching out is because she's hoping that you're interested and you want to see her or she may be trying to see if you're you're still kind of on the hook so to speak in case things don't work out with the other guy. It's really fucking important. Be direct decides to give right to the point. So once you say, hey, when you're free to get together, you're going to invite them to bring a bottle of wine, coffee, tea, etc., whatever you drink to your place to make dinner together. You want to make a dinner date, something in the evening. Why? You want to hang out, you want to have fun, and you want to hook up. Make a definite date. Hang out, have fun, and hook up like I talk about in my book. It's like a first date. You get no credit for your past history together or any past relationship. Do not talk about getting back together, being exclusive, or locking them down to a commitment. It must be their idea to become exclusive again. You simply need to focus on creating a fun-filled romantic opportunity for sex to happen, i.e. a date. So here's some other situations that are going to come up when you're trying to set a date. They may not be open to it. They may be trying to keep you as a male orbiter, so to speak, or a backup. So when they won't come to your place for a date, 
if they have contacted you again and you try to make a date at your place but they won't accept or they counter by trying to get you to pick them up or meet them out somewhere, you must give them this response. It's been a long week and I'm just in the mood to hang at my place. If you don't want to come over and make dinner together, then give me a call in two to three weeks and maybe I'll be up for something more formal then. On my website, I'm going to have all these bullet points that I'm reading. It's going to be in an actual article with the exact same name as this video if you happen to be watching this video by itself on YouTube or somewhere else. They'll either agree to dinner or they won't. If they won't agree to dinner, then say this, I've got to run, but get in touch with me if you change your mind and then walk and never look back. When they won't make a date. So you try to make a date and they just flat out say, no, I'm not in and they leave things up in the air. Since you are always going to wait to hear from them first and then on two consecutive different times when they have reached out to you first, you try to set a date but they won't, then you must stop asking. This is really important. Don't continue asking if on two different times you try to ask them out and they just go eh, – eh, and they just leave it up in the air. Never ask them out again unless they bring it up first. From that point forward, if they continue to reach out to you, you're not going to bring up getting together. If they have contacted you by text, email, Facebook Messenger or other chat services, you will keep your message responses to two to three replies maximum, period. This is really important. Don't violate this. There's no reason to chit chat. Make a date or you're out of there. It's that simple. If they contact you by phone and you're having a phone conversation or you're talking over FaceTime or Skype video or audio, you will keep your conversation to two to three minutes max. This is very important. When they've contacted you via digital messaging or voice or video means, you will always give them this response when you end the conversation. Hey, it was great hearing from you, but I've got to run. Keep in touch. That basically says, hey, I'm busy. My attention is elsewhere and I really am placing a low value on talking to you because I've pretty much given up. You don't want to try. You don't want to see me. Fuck it. I'm not interested in wasting another second or a moment of my fucking life. You're not going to say any of this to them but this is your mindset. You're going to be sweet. You're going to be kind but you're like, hey, I'm busy. I got to run. Keep in touch. That pretty much communicates that you're, not, you're done. You're not making an effort. You're not doing anything. You gave them two opportunities to set a date and you're like, eh, eh. Fuck it. From that point forward, they will either bring up getting together first and then you can try and set a date or they will stop contacting you for good. Next bullet point. This is really important. Let them contact you exclusively. That means 100% of the calling, texting and pursuing must be done by them. When someone is unwilling to see you, go on dates with you or give you a chance to start to rekindle your romance and they have pushed you away. You must let them contact you 100% of the time from that point forward. Very important. This is different from what I teach in my book and how a man should properly start off a courtship. So this only applies when you got dumped or blown off and did not agree to it. Very fucking important. Because like I talk about in the book, if you're dating somebody brand new and you've never gone out with them, you're going to call them once per week until they start reaching out and contacting you on a frequent basis. And once that happens... You can continue to back off to the point where you're not even calling them or texting them anymore. It's not necessary. If they're calling and texting you two to three times a week and you're making dates every time they call, you're going to be seeing each other two to three times a week. There's no reason to reach out. You're a busy person. You should not be fucking around on the phone for useless chit chat because this enables you to be mysterious. It gives them time to wonder about you and think about you and women need time and space to away from you to wonder about you and wonder where they stand with you. If you're always in their face, you get in the way of that happening. It's natural. It must happen some way, shape or form. So when they do reach out, you make a definite date and then you get off the phone. Be direct, decisive and get right to the point. No idle chit chat or unnecessary BS conversation. This is the last bullet point. This is this is also – these are this is a different, little different case. This is if you dump them and you're going, oh, I probably shouldn't have done that. The only time you're going to contact an ex when you are trying to get them back is if you dump them but later regret that decision and want to rekindle things. You will only contact them one time. This is very important. 
when you are trying to get them back. You will contact them once, apologize for being a jackass, tell them you would like to see them again and make a definite date. In this situation, it's okay to go pick them up or go meet them for dinner if they won't come to your place. Remember, you're the one that ditched them, so you basically kind of have to suck it up and apologize and, and go pick them up. It only applies in this special case. This is because you push them away. Therefore, if you try to make a date when you contact them but they are unwilling to, tell them you'd love to see them again and have another chance. Then tell them to contact you if they ever change their mind. If they reach out after that, try to set a definite date. But after you've contacted them once, one time only, and they are unwilling to make a date, then you must walk and never look back. Because if you call, you want to rekindle things, they're like, eh, I don't know, i got to think about it. Then you say, you know what, give me a call if you change your mind. You're not going to continue to pursue and pursue and pursue like they do in the movies. This just You're just basically communicating, hey, I fucked up, I'm sorry, I was a shithead and I want to make it up to you. When are you free to get together for dinner? They're like, oh, I don't know, I'm kind of seeing somebody else. So you know what, well, now you know where I stand. I realize I fucked up. I'd like to work it out but if you don't. Well, then I wish you all the best. But if you change your mind, please do get in touch and I'd love to see you. If they contact you and you make a date and you hang out, have fun and hook up and things go well, then you can treat this situation like a normal con- courtship by contacting them once per week to set a date. Remember, this only applies when you were the one that broke up with them and now later regret it. But once they feel safe and comfortable to start contacting you after your last date, then you shouldn't have to contact them anymore. Then you can simply back off, wait to hear from them, and when you do, make the next date. Under this circumstance only, when you did the dumping, it's okay to contact them once per week if they agree to go out on a date with you the first time you contacted them after dumping them, just like I discuss in my book. So again, those are the 13 most important bullet points. Again, if you're watching this and you're like, where do I read this? You just Google. Corey Wayne, Principles to Get an X Back, and that article will come up. And so everything I've just said on camera, you can actually read on my website if you need to review it 10 to 15 times to get to know that strategy so you don't end up confusing it with other women that you're dating. Because I, I notice a lot of people tend to do this if they're not really reading the book or they're watching a bunch of different videos and they're like, well, that well, you said one time that you pursue and the other one you said you don't. It's like I was very specific here. Took things on a case-by-case basis. These are the most common things that you're going to see. So if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to book a paid phone, Skype, or email coaching session. You can choose any of those options by going to my website, clicking the products tab at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions for booking whichever option works best for you. And I will talk to you soon. 